Yo, Counter-Attack Podcast with myself, Daps. Guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, all of that good stuff. You know, it's been a while since I've come with, you know, the, the MLS, you know, the MLS content. Obviously, you guys know that I went out there for, for my show in New, in New Mexico. But we're back again. We're back again with um, another shot of MLS. And, um, you know, I thought I'll bring it back with Mandem because man them do you know what i'm saying i'll 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 bring it back with with a guy that he's been in the league for a couple of seasons now he 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 knows the league and you know he i i just think he's just going to be a, a great person to talk to a person who you know you know what we're, we're, we're going to get into it because i'm not going to say what I, exactly what i was going to say i'm i'm, I'm going to basically say that this is your 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 redemption your comeback your but we're gonna get into all of my all of my questions properly um in a bit. But yes, I have Derek Etienne. Did I say it right? Yes, Etienne yeah. Junior. Yes. Do, yes. do you want the junior at, at the end of your name when people say yeah, it? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I I get some respect to to Pop, so I I'll I'll go junior, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But yeah, no. How are you doing, man? What's 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 been going on? I'm good, man. Just, you know, settling into Toronto. It's been a, a busy uh last two weeks so um just trying to get settled find a place out here uh just got some food some nice street food so it was, it's nice but uh yeah just trying to get in the swing of things all over again it's kind of tough yeah so um you've been there now you said two weeks did you say yeah about about two weeks yeah probably okay. 15 days have you been like staying you said you're trying to find a place are you like in a hotel right now or you just you know they have they have uh, housing for the uh, for guys uh, they bring in. So like I'm in a like a, a one uh, like a one bedroom uh, uh, condo right now. Mm-hmm. So I I got uh, houses to look at and apartments to look at on Sunday. So hopefully I yeah. get that process. This is this is dead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. So like, what's you know before we get into that football and everything that. Like, have you had a chance to look around Toronto? Is this your first time in Toronto outside of playing, of course? Yeah, this is my, my first time being here. Uh, like, I, like, just, you know, just, just kicking it and all that stuff. But, yeah, it's, it's, the city is, is, is nice. Like, you got uh, great places to eat, all that stuff. Then, obviously, you know, you got all uh, the tower that Drake was hanging off of. And, yeah, it's, I, I think it's actually been perfect to be here during the Drake Kendrick beat to, to see how, <laughs> how – uh, Canada took that L, but yeah, it's uh, it's real nice. I like it. It's definitely one of the the better cities that I've lived in. Uh, so yeah, once I, I feel once I get a place, I'll be more settled in, and then I'll be able to actually like explore. Yeah. Um. Before we get into it, you mentioned Drake and Kendrick. Um. Who did you Who did you have as as winning that one? I think it's a tie. I gotta I gotta see the receipts. Whoever whoever can whoever can pull up what the receipts is is the winner for me because it went from. All right, yeah, I'm talking about I'm the, I'm the goat and all that stuff to getting real personal, and I don't I don't I don't know them personally, so I don't care about your personal business. To be honest, some of the the shots that that Kendrick took and that Drake took, I was like, okay, but I think the best song was Family Matters. I think Family Matters was the best the best one, and then like us, that I just think because the, the beat it makes everybody wanna wanna slide to it. But yeah, I, <laughs> I gave I gave it to Drake before the before he did meet the the Greyhounds, I said Drake, but I, I say it's a tie now. I gotta see okay, receipts. Cool. I feel like Toronto has, has got the better of you there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'll be honest. I I like Kendrick, but I just feel like people are going because he does so much. People are giving him credit for extra stuff that they don't give Drake credit for. Oh, double, triple entendres, and you say, say a Drake one. Nah, nah, oh, bro, you gotta dig deep for this. That's what you're doing for Kendrick. So, like, so for me, it's like, yeah, I like Kendrick because lyric. I'm a, I like lyricism. So, like, but I think what I'm, who I'm really disappointed with is Cole because I think, I think Cole would have washed both of them, and I stand. Oh yeah, on yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Cole, Cole, Cole is my, Cole is my guy. Yeah. Like, anyone, anyone that knows me knows that J Cole is literally like he can do no wrong in my, in my eyes, and and even with the whole. Um, you know, people are probably listening to this thinking, what's going on here? But anyway, but yeah. even with the even with the whole apology stuff, I looked at it as something different. Like he 
he probably had a conversation with Kendrick, knew what was coming, just said, you know what, I'm out. I actually respect your thing. And you know what? I actually want people to come out and try and test Cole now because Cole was on a killing spree for yeah. how many years? And all of a sudden, people are like, ah, Cole. Okay, cool. If that was any other rapper, I don't think he does the apology. I don't think, yeah. but because it's Kendrick, yeah. yeah. But yeah, Cole's, Cole's uh, my guy as well, man. Yeah, those are, Cole's my guy. And I, so I'm like, yeah. When I heard the apology, just for the rap part of it, I'm like, yo, I want you to, I want you to kill these guys so that everyone can stop playing with your name because they be talking mm. about you. You, your songs are boring and all that stuff. I right, so cook them. But then, yeah, he definitely got the inside scoop that like, yeah, we we gonna get personal. So I, if you don't want your your dirty laundry aired out, I say you bow out respectfully, my boy. And that's exactly what he did. And hey, I'm fine because I don't I don't need Kendrick and Drake breaking up a happy home with with uh Cole and them. So yeah, I I get it. Yeah, trust me. But yeah, you know. You guys that, that are listening at home, that's your bit of hip hop weekly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hope you hope you enjoyed it, man. And but we're gonna we're gonna get into into Derek and um, like where did it start for you? Because you know people that will go and research you, they don't already know you. They don't know or they'll see that you were at Red Bulls, but you weren't born in New York. So how how did you end up in at, or at Red Bulls? So um, I was born in Virginia. But uh, my dad played professionally um, in the second the second uh, division in uh, the U.S. And he went to a team called Long Island Rough Riders. And uh, my mom was born, my mom from, from Jersey. So uh, it was just a simple commute over the bridge and all that stuff for him um, when we moved to Jersey. But um, I had been playing, you know, I, I felt above the level of competition from 10 to, from like eight to 10. And um, my goal was always to go pro because I went to a bunch of practices with my dad and my uncle seeing them. And then I was like, yeah, this is cool. Like, yeah, I get to kick the ball around and get paid for it. Like, yeah, I'm not, that, that's what I'm trying to do. Like, that's that that's not a job for me. So mm. uh, I had that and then I, I met, I had some friends who I played with and they uh, knew the director of the, uh, Red Bull Academy and they let him know like yeah we have a really good player here and you know you, sh you should bring him in for training so when I was like 11 12 years old I went in and trained with uh, Red Bull and it, it was uh it was like surreal to walk in at this time they trained at the Jets uh training facility in Jersey so you're going going in seeing like the Jets facility like oh this is where it's how pros do things the Red Bull gear the gears that I've um, they've been wearing that I watched been playing for years so I mean that was that was cool and then I was able to to uh impress the coach and from that I would train for the rest of that year with them and then the next year I signed with them so I was in the academy from 12 until I left for for school and uh, it was it was definitely the, the best decision because there were definitely times when it was tough parents left um Jersey and I had to, to stay with friends to stay with Red Bull but I, I knew that I could I could break into the scene with Red Bull and thankfully I did. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting one because obviously football is not the main. Obviously, I say football. When I say football, I mean like soccer to you guys, but it's really football. But um, yeah, so obviously that like football is the the main. I mean, if football isn't the main sport out there for you guys, so how hard is it to actually, you know, get the support for when it comes to playing football and also just find spaces where you can actually go and become better and, you know, have the coaching or the necessary coaching needed to get to that level when it's probably like what, fourth or maybe even fifth, like most like sport in um, in America. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was, I feel like I was blessed because I had my dad and uh, we were um, in a position uh, financially that I was able to have a backyard. So that was where I spent most of my time um but yeah it was real difficult because yeah I, I grew up in a area called patterson new jersey and it's huge for football baseball basketball like they victor, victor cruz uh victor cruz went to to um school close by you had uh isaiah thomas at one point in time was the number one basketball player in the country so um you have yeah just a bunch of it's a heavily dominican 
Puerto Rican population. So baseball is, is cracking with that. But yeah, I, I was lucky enough to to have a dad who 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 played football. And yeah, once I once I he got me a little he always had me a, a little red soccer ball. He's like, once I got Ooh. that, it was it was like nothing else mattered to me. So it was for that as, as, uh, aspect, it was easy. But yeah, it's definitely difficult when you're especially being in the States where you go on every every other block, every every city has its two, three, four football fields, basketball courts all, all around. So it was real difficult to find places, but that's when you, uh, being in New Jersey, New York area, you get all that culture in there. So you'll find the Jamaicans, you'll find the, the Trinidadians, the, the Haitians and, and the Peruvians and all that who, yeah, there's in the park and they got shoes laid out and you got 20 people in a small little area and you're just trying to, trying to play. So, uh, for that, that was real easy. And then having a bunch of male cousins and, and stuff around my age, you all played as well, made it easy. We'll go across the street uh, and play in the, in the school, in the school little yard and, and all that stuff. So uh, we found our ways, but it was definitely difficult. And it's just amazing to see now, you know, 15 years later to see that, yeah, you got many pitches around the, around and how big, how big uh, footy is now, because I mean, you got the best, arguably the best player of all time playing in the league, selling out football uh, stadiums that football teams can't even do. So, I mean, I think it's very, it's the, the landscape has changed a lot, but yeah, it was definitely difficult, but I was blessed to have the family that I had to, to make sure that I stayed on the right track and, and kept me playing. Yeah. You, you mentioned that, um, you know, now that you've got the, the best player, arguably the best player in the world, playing in, in, the, in the league. And I'm going to mention this to you later on, but seeing as we're already here, have you noticed the difference in maybe like the league, how it's perceived, um, even in regards to that engagement you might have with people since Messi has, has come over into the league? And now obviously Suarez, Busquets, Alba, he's just bringing his old Barcelona team with him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I was in the airport, leaving, literally leaving from Atlanta to come to Toronto, and saw middle-aged white man sitting in a Miami, Miami jersey, pink Miami jersey, and just casually like, "Oh, oh, you support Miami? Oh no, but can't not get a Messi jersey." Like being, you'll be in the, you'll. This is this is the craziest thing. I'm in the Atlanta United team store, and they got Messi jerseys in there. That I think that. that says it all like just how how massive he is to the game and then you know I think one thing that he's definitely taken advantage of is how big marketing in U.S. how uh, it is and uh he's able to to just dip his hand in so many different pots and all that stuff so like yeah. it's I think it's it's only going to make things better not only for the game in America but also for the game Genuinely, I mean, you you can you can attest to this having um you know teams doing their preseason, they'll come to come to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of an escape, but like they get you actually get the lat the to see how how coveted you are. Of course, you're you're in you're in London and all that stuff. Oh yeah, we know you, but to go across the pond and then be in in L.A. and have a bunch of Arsenal fans waiting outside. I, I feel I feel like it's only going to help because people want to see the best player. But then once yeah. they see the game, I feel like the game, the, the game is just, it's so beautiful to watch. And once people get that little, that little Nick, that little niche for it, I think it's just going to explode. Yeah. Oh, so. I, I definitely noticed something had, had changed. So last year I went to the MLS all-star game. I was speaking before about this. And um, it was in Washington. And I think a couple of weeks before that, Messi had signed and honestly the boom in in around that time was it was absolutely crazy that like, people are just interested and bearing in mind I spent a lot of time in America doing like football related stuff and whatever and I've never seen anything like that so to see where it's at now like I mentioned that the players that are going on I saw I think yesterday or the day before that Olivier Giroud has now come to yeah the LAFC in, with, with um Lloris so like yeah. it's yeah, hey, it's crazy. I think what was it? 
we played him. We played against Messi, his second game for mm-hmm. Miami, and we get there. You walk out. You look to the left, and you see Beckham's little area. It was a man I cannot name at this moment in time because he's in a lot. <laughs> <of trouble. laughs> I'm not gonna leave that name out, but DJ Khaled was there. Um. I know the LA game, they had LeBron, Serena, and all that stuff. So to be able to get, you know, superstars, legends, like, and other goats to come out, I mean, only only the elite have that power. And, yeah, you, I think it's also helped with, with, with marketing. I think, who was it, Westbrook? And them got uh, stocks in some, some teams up in, in, in England. So I think it's just you're everyone seeing – how big the game can be and what and what it means, yeah, it's 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 massive. And I think Messi's it's it's only the the tip of the iceberg because I think Neymar's next. Yeah, that 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 will be. I always said once either Messi, Ronaldo, or Neymar went, it was like game over. Obviously, Messi's Messi's there now, and um, Neymar's obviously in, in in Saudi injured. But you know, I truly believe, like you said, he's probably going to go over, and Honestly, from there, I think you're just going to see a different level of, of player. Because right now, you're getting the players who are like at the end of their career. They're still good players, but they're, yeah. at, the, they're, at, they're at the end. I, I think now we're, what we're going to start seeing are more players maybe just going over there in their prime mm-hmm. rather than, you know, just, just the, um, the back end of, of their career. And, you know, it's only going to get, it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to yeah. get bigger. Exactly, especially when you take the the money aspect into it. Because I remember when I first got in the league with the pay ones, and I was looking like, "Yo, this is like this is terrible. I can't. I got still live with mom and dad. I can't. I can't even survive off this." But now, when you see the the money that it's bringing, and then of course, when you have L.A., I'll say Atlanta, New York, Red Bull, um, both L.A. teams, we have those those markets that that you can tap into. I think that that's going to be a big selling point for guys. Cause you, you, I think what we, what I've seen at least is that guys are starting to think more about their brand and not waiting until the end of, of the career to start looking at other options and other avenues. And I think the way MLS is because of the marketing and all that stuff, it gives you a chance to, to be put in these boardrooms and in, in these places where, yeah, if you're a, a Neymar, yeah, you know what? Okay. Um, you know what? I'll come. I'll take the. Let's say he. You're you're not gonna get the salary he's making there, the the thirty million a year. But okay, yeah, I'll take fifteen million. But yeah, give me some jersey sales. Yeah, I want to. And maybe you know what? Me and Messi can buy a team when we're all said when it's all said and done at this price. And it's just like, yo, the the money is there. So it's like I think once, I think what it is honestly is once the money gets here, I think that's when you'll start seeing people start to be like, all right, because hey, if you're 25 and you can go to a place where the game is growing and all that stuff for two years and make your money and, and all right now now european teams and comp are, are calling back again I, I don't think people are turning that down as well as getting the money here that they feel that they deserve to come out here and play yeah no i i, I fully hear it but you know we're gonna we're gonna have to double back a bit because i kind of went i kind of took you away from where, where i wanted to actually see you but oh, okay. um no, so where what what I want to get into now is that obviously like you you you're at Red Bull. How much of your before I go to summer, how much of your debut for Red Bull, your full debut, your senior debut, do you remember? Oh, I remember it was the the it was terrible. Oh really? <laughs> oh my god. I'll never I'll never forget it. It was uh nine nine eleven and twenty 16 we're playing dc united we're up uh we're up i want to say one nothing five minutes left in the game yeah Derek, go ahead go out there you know we're at home get your debut in front of the fans enjoy it all right cool standing on the sideline right before they the ball goes out there to put my number up dc united scores so now we're like, all right, like, yo, there's five minutes left. Push to get a goal or let's just get the draw. Okay. Mm-hmm. Get on the field, get one touch, get a play, 
a guy could have slipped it in. He doesn't. They steal the ball, go score, lose the game 2-1. That was my my Red Bull debut. Yeah. So you, you just you just came and just crushed the whole party. Yeah. No, 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 no. That, like usually they give you a, a game ball afterwards. Like the the coach wasn't even having it. He just like, yeah, that's not good enough, guys. Like we can't have that. I'm just sitting there like, so can I at least just get the game ball? You know, this is mm. memorabilia for me at least. Yeah, he wasn't having it. So yeah, it it was a tough one for sure. And it's it's so funny because like when you're young. You probably internalize that a lot more, thinking, "Oh, you're gonna be looking at me. Is you gonna, yeah. is you gonna look and think, oh, I came and I messed up.' You know, but really and truly, the the more you play, the the more you just see, it's just it's just one of those things that happen. You just kind of, you know, buy it off. But you re, you you recovered quite quite well from that. I'm I, I, I would hope. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. So uh, yeah, after after that, I think it was. It wasn't until the next the next year, first game of the season, I got my first start, first game we won. And it kind of felt like a a redemption because yeah, I was able to get the start. We win win the game at home, got my family and friends in the in the stadium. So it felt like a proper a proper proper debut for me. So I, I think that it, it went a lot better after that. Okay, that's 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 good. At least it went a lot better. But you know, um after having some time at, at Red Bulls, you know, when I was going through your career, I saw that you ended up going to Cincinnati. Um, mm-hmm. What happened at Red Bulls for you to end up going to Cincinnati? Was it a thing where you maybe wanted to go? Was it a thing where, do you guys even get a say sometimes? Because I feel like when I see how they talk about transfers in, in MLS, it's, it's like NBA almost. So It's exactly, <laughs> you can get a phone call 11 o'clock at night, yo, you got traded. I got you. There's a, and the team, the team admin and the GM are going to call you in a couple of minutes and talk about your flights and all that stuff. And you'll have a flight eight o'clock in the morning to get there to train that next. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's the, the rules out here. I think it's, I think that's another thing that's holding the league back because there's just so many rules that definitely you don't see in, in other, in other countries and, and, in other leagues and all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, the Red Bull thing, it was tough. Um, that was, so I did my, my first year, I was with the second team a lot. Uh, we won a champion, uh, the second division championship, uh, there second year, I started playing a little bit more, but then, uh, that third, my third year is when I really like kind of broke in and actually like solidified myself in the, in the squad. And I think I was like the, the fourth leading goal scorer that year. So like it would be one, what we call the supporter shield, yeah, which is the best team in the league, which is, I, I think, should be praised a lot more than being able to win some knockout games, I, I think, yeah. But after that, I was thinking preseason, all right. Yeah, I was a key contributor last year, so that means it can only go up from here. Get into preseason, things are going well. I'm looking like I'm, I'm starting, and then I uh, tear my, my hip flexor. So I'm out for six weeks. And I don't know, it just, at that point in time, it just felt a little weird. Like I felt as if I was on the outside looking in now after that, after like seeing, seeing the seeing things get back into training and you, you know how you can coaches tell you things, but you can hear what they're not saying to you. So yeah. it's, Oh, you know what, you know, you, you're, you're not fit enough to go and come with us, but what we want you to do is we want you to start and play with the second team and see how long you could play. So y'all yeah, risk me playing, starting a game to play 90 when there's no, I can come off the bench for the first team. You know what, fine, whatever. Go do that, score, the team loses. So I'm thinking, all right, that's one. That's, that's their one chance. Time goes by and the coach just keeps telling me the same exact thing. Yeah, you know what? It's hard to leave you off the team this week. It's hard to leave you off the team this week and all that stuff. And it's like, if it's hard, just put me in the, in the team. Like, it's not even like the team's winning. Like we were, we were like on like a four game losing streak, whatever. And he's like, no, I'll just keep buying your time. So at that point I was like, I, I'm not, I'm not waiting for no handouts. I'm, I'm, I'm taking what's mine. Go. I, I think I played three games in a row with the second team scored, scored, scored. So now I'm in the office. Yeah. Like, Hey man. I'm doing what I need to do on the field, like you're telling me, and then in games with the second team, I just need one opportunity. 
okay, get in. We play L.A., score the game-winning goal. So I'm thinking, all right, now my season's about to jumpstart. Next roster, left out, left out, left out. So I'm like, all right, he'll, he'll need me again because I know my quality is cool. I go to with Haiti to the, the Gold Cup in 2019. We make it to the semifinals of the tournament, lose to Mexico on a PK in extra time. I played a bunch of minutes, so I'm thinking, hey, it, it, it's, it's going on. It's going, oh, oh. When I get back, they're going to see what I did. All right, I got to jump. I got to jump past some of these guys in the, in the lineup. Tournament's over. AJ gets a phone call. So yeah, what team is Derek going to? Because I know that I know how well he played. He's got some some offers. Well, no, I mean, he has some offers, but there's nothing concrete. Derek Derek is happy to be here. He wants to wants to to play. So everything is going everything's going good. I get back to Red Bull, three start three games on the bounce, get in a get an assist. Got some got three wins in the three games I started, and then. We play on. I think we played on a Wednesday. Get a, uh, and it's the the transfer deadline is twelve o'clock. That that uh no eleven p.m. that night. So we're about to play, and my agent texts me before the game. Hey, good luck today. Which was weird to me because my agent really like he'll hit me up after game. So like that was already messing with my head. I'm like, all right, we're whatever. Then coach yanks me at halftime of the game takes me out yeah we're just gonna try it we're going for a different look Derek yeah yeah okay no problem get home look at my phone it's about probably like eight o'clock nine o'clock look at my phone and I got a notification on Instagram from a, a fan page of Cincinnati saying welcome to the team so I screenshot it and I sent it to my agent he calls me right away yeah I don't know what's going on just give me a second look at my phone General manager of Red Bulls calling me. Yeah, Derek, just want to let you know, uh, we decided to loan you out to Cincinnati. Wait, well, what do you mean? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, we were told that, you know, you wanted more playing time and we think this is going to be the, the best opportunity for you to get playing time. Mm -hmm. So y'all going to send me to the, I'm doing well enough to play here, but y'all going to send me to the worst team in the league? All right, we'll see how that goes. I'm thinking, nah, I'm, I'm telling them, no, there's no chance I'm going. Like, nah, I'll, I'll sit here and y'all have to and, and wait my time until you have to play me. I'm not going to the worst team. Call my agent. Yeah, what's, what's going on? Yeah, man, you're going to have to go to Cincinnati. And then spend three miserable months in Cincinnati for them to ask me if I want to come back. And I said, I have no problem coming back, but I got to know what the plan is, how we're going, how we're going to get better and all this stuff. And there were some, some inside stuff with Cincinnati that, you know, what the coach I felt was a little, that he crossed the line a lot with mm -hmm. how he, he was a Dutch coach. And I, I just think, don't think he understood how racially insensitive he was at a point in time. Oh, wow. Wow. So like one time I went to national camp with Haiti, I come back and this guy says, yeah, you know what, Derek, because you just came back from Haiti, maybe you can do some voodoo and get, get the team some wins. My face, exactly. I'm like, first things first, I don't, I'm not into voodoo, but I'm not going to play on voodoo because like that's, that's something you don't play with. Like that's, 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 so I'm like, yeah, you, you're, and I got teammates sitting there like laughing, my American teammates who sitting there laughing and uh, I'm like, yeah, I think that's funny. Like, that's not like that's that's making jokes off of people's like expense. Like, imagine I come in here talking about, you know, school shootings and stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't think that's mm -hmm. funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that's crossing the line. I said exactly, but I just let him do it. So, first one, I'm like, you know what? Maybe he's Dutch. You don't get it. And then he made a slave comment the last game of the year in DC. And I was like, yeah, I can't play for this guy. I'm not. I got, for a guy to, to make a comment about slaves and ha see no problem with it when you have five black players in your locker room, yeah, uh, I'm not having it. So just went back to Red Bull as the uh, the loan was was done, and Red Bull said they're not picking up my option, so I had to figure out 
what I was going to do. You know what? Uh, what? What I will say, because that's, that's a very loaded answer. What, what I will say is that it's crazy. To, to, even, hear, to even hear that. So it's, you know what? It's crazy, but I'm not surprised. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, mm-hmm. but I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. And, you know, fair play, you know, to you for actually saying that I'm, I'm, I can't stay here because there are some people who, because it's football and I get, you know, it's your career, like you kind of just put up with certain things, but you shouldn't have to put up with, with that sort of yeah. stuff. And, and these, are, these are some of the things that people just don't see. Do you get exactly. what I'm saying? And it's, it's bigger than football. Do you know what I'm saying? Because people might have to deal with that just in their normal workplaces. So it's yeah. actually crazy that, you know, that you had to even hear, hear some of that. And you know what's so crazy as well? If you were to come out, and, like you're, you're telling me now on the podcast, but if you were to come out now, I mean, come out at the time and say, this is what happened. I don't even have faith that it will, it will be dealt with properly. I don't think so either. Because the same coach ended up using the N-word that next off-season and they mutually parted ways. Oh, look at that. That's, that's, you know, that's, I don't want to talk about the league because I'm not mm. trying to let have them out there. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Some, that's some stuff that, you know, that I feel like can definitely be fixed because I feel like with certain aspects of, of just the world in general, there are certain things that you just can't say or unless it's over for you. And to, to make it seem as if it was a, both mutual, both sides, I think was a, was a soft stance to take rather than parted ways and got rid of him, fired him, because I think it sets a precedent on what you're willing to tolerate. And I just think that on, on that mark, you know, uh, the league missed, but I think it's definitely gotten better because you, there definitely has been some other things in the league that's, that's gone down that they clamped down on that, you know, uh, a, a lot of the black players were, were happy about, but yeah, it's, I mean, I say this all the time when I talk to people who like don't really know about the league and all that stuff. It's like, yo, you, they think, oh, professional athlete, soccer player doing whatever, do, playing soccer for a living. Yeah, everything is, everything is sweet. And obviously, you know, you get the the chance from the fans, the, that stuff, but to have it in your organization. I was just lucky enough that it was a, a loan with the option to buy and not a, a, a straight yeah. up trip because then I'd have been stuck there at least. But I was able to express my, my dislike for what was happening and was able to get out of that situation. I can't say the same for some other guys that, that were there who had the, to spend three, four years there and come in last place every single year because that would have did my head in for sure. <laughs> so, okay, so on to, on to better things. Like, yeah. you, you know, from there, you obviously have to go and find a new team. And first of all, what I want to ask is, what is that process like in MLS when it comes to having to search for a new team? Because I can imagine if you've played in the Premier League, let's just say, the search for a new team probably isn't that hard in terms of mm-hmm. the world. But with MLS, like, how, how do you even go about, go about it? Because there's only so many teams you can go to in, in, in MLS. So what, what is that process like? And is it, is it a nerve, you know, a nervous one, a nervous wait trying to find a new team? Yeah, it's definitely nervous. Be uh, uh, nervous because at that point in time, now you're at the the leisure of of the league. So it's if I so my contract was up. So now I got to find a new team. Now, now you're coming into the politics side of it. Of okay, how much money are we going to give you? Okay, this was your salary when you were at Red Bull. This is what the the team can afford and all that stuff. And then dealing with the league okay so the league the team and you can agree on okay we'll do three years with two option years the league can be like nah flip that give them two, uh give them give them uh four give them let's say two options three years uh two guaranteed three option years like so like the league can can veto can veto stuff and change stuff and all that stuff so like it was for me, it was nerve wracking because I was still at this time still kind of young, and I had just started getting my feet wet in the in the league and making my myself known. So it was kind of basically like, what am I what am I willing to give up to be on a team? Because then you know you have second division teams who are all all in, but 
you know how it is but in some second divisions you go there you're not getting out ain't no there's no coming back so that was that was tough but then i was able to, i called a call, uh, called my agent and he was like hey like yeah we have a good opportunity for you with with this team and with columbus so uh just make sure you're ready so the whole off season we didn't make playoffs with with um cincinnati so i was off from early november middle november until preseason started the end of january so it was a, a lot of just making sure that I stay right mentally because, you know, it is nerve wracking, not knowing where you're going to be at, not knowing, you know, if you're going to be able to maintain the same money you had and all that stuff. And yeah, it's definitely stressful. And then on top of that, once December hits and your contract's up, there ain't no money coming in. So you, yeah. you, yeah. you, you got to figure out how you're going to handle things. And yeah, so it was definitely nerve wracking. But once I got the, the the yeah you're gonna go to preseason with Columbus I knew that you know all I have to do is just perform the way I know I can and all things will take care of itself and that's ultimately what happened even though I didn't take a pay cut I was mad about that but <laughs> not in the end yeah so it's it's funny because like again people might look at you and just think you know you're playing professional football you don't have to worry about such things but at the same time, you're 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 still a human being. You're still a normal person with outgoings and you know family and and, and whatnot. And it's just I, I always find it interesting when people when players actually talk about that side of things as well, just to you know humanize them. You get what I'm saying? So, um, but from my knowledge, because my real MLS knowledge only really started in the last two three years. You know, I knew I'd watch like Galaxy games because obviously the big boys were there. Um, mm -hmm. New York Red Bulls because Henri was there, right? Yeah. Phillips was there. Um, but, you know, in the last couple of years, I've kind of grown to see more and more teams. Um, and in, in my, from what I've seen, Columbus are a good team. They, they're, they're like one of the, one of the better teams in, in, in the MLS. So you've gone from, you've gone from not really playing much at Red Bulls, having that, situation at Cincinnati to now landing at Columbus did you feel like you were still in a big team um when you got to the Columbus or was it one of those things where it's like this is where we want to be we're not quite there yet but we want to we want to get there or did yeah did you just have that feeling straight away that right this is a a good team here yeah so oh uh, I was for for Red Bull the whole time from 2016 to 2019 we actually had crazy, like tough games with Columbus. They were always a top team in the East. And then also being one of the original teams, it's, it was, I understood how, how big it was to be there. Um, Cause of course, you know, coming from New York, you got a big market, the, the big market. Columbus, obviously a smaller market, but there's still history there and, and all that stuff. So when I, when I went, I was like, okay, I went from Red Bull, which is a perennial, uh, playoff team and, and powerhouse to Columbus, which is another one. So I took it for, as a standpoint of, yeah, this is definitely a very good team. And then getting there, seeing some of the guys that were in the locker room, Darlington, Nagby, uh, Lucas Zellerian, Pedro Santos, uh, Harrison, a fool, Milton, Valesuena, Giassi Zara, just a, just a couple of guys who are, have, have had very good careers and established themselves in the league. I think honest, Word of, word of my mother, I think the second day of preseason when I got there, second day training camp, I called my dad and I was like, yo, we going to win MLS Cup this year and I'm going to be starting. I'm going to start the final. And he said, you sure? And I said, nah, trust me. He, we, have some, we have some dogs here. And then the, I'll tell you this, Lucas Delarion and Darlington Nagby are two of the best midfielders the league has ever seen and two of the best middle, two of the best middle players I've ever played with that I saw the quality there and I was like yeah we can get get the right guys around them we got a championship squad for sure so like I knew from that moment on it was just about getting things together getting guys in the right places figuring out the positions and all that stuff but yeah I saw I saw real early the quality and then yeah I was confident enough to to to, to call that so 
we, we we're talking about the fact that you guys won the championship now, and you're I'm actually speaking to someone that has scored in in the final, and you know helped actually deliver like the cup. So what was speaking on that? What what was that like? You know, scoring in the final win, and, and you know the, the the biggest trophy you could win in terms of MLS. Like you you bring that home. Like what, what was that like? That was yeah. That wasn't something that like it didn't hit me how major it was until probably like the beginning of of preseason the next year. Because yeah, obviously you you want to win trophies and all that stuff, but that one that one was just it was surreal for me because I caught COVID and missed uh, two games during playoffs. So we got uh, did a good job in the season. We were able to solidify home field advantage. So I think we were like the fourth seed. So as long as one, two, and three in the East wasn't in and one, two, and three in the West wasn't in, we're hosting MLS Cup. And I think we only lost one game at home that year. So we were like, yo, we get to the we get to the final, knock out these teams, we'll be good. We get Red Bull the first the first game of uh of playoffs. So I'm already buzzing for that one. I said, Yeah, yeah, cut me. I bet <laughs> say that see me now. Pack them up, beat them. I'm like, all right, so, uh, celebrating in the locker room. And then one guy walks in, and I remember someone saying, yo, didn't he test positive for COVID this morning? So uh, me, I'm not even really thinking it. I'm like, ah, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, I, I, made, it, I made it this far without COVID. I think we played on the – that game was the 23rd or the 21st on my birthday. The day before my birthday, I get a call from the medical staff. I see the the medical staff number pop up, and I knew it like my heart sank. I knew I was like, "Yeah, I definitely got COVID." He calls me, "Yeah, Derek, sorry man, but yeah, you're gonna have to be out for two weeks uh, for the protocol because you have COVID." So I'm sitting there now. I'm like, "Oh, what does this mean? Like, I'm starting now, but like, what does this mean for the team? Like." Hopefully these guys can, you know, get the get the job done while I'm not not there because I'll I'll be like heartbroken if this is I felt like this was the opportunity this is the year that we gonna do it and I'm sick and I can't do it. We win the next the next round, win the next round and then how now it is, I think it was four days before the final, MLS Cup final, and uh winger. The other the, the winger on the other side test positive for COVID. So the coach calls me, he said, Hey, like, you think you're ready to, to play? He didn't know. And I ended up telling him, I said, listen, after 10 days, I was out there running because I was not, I was making sure I was playing in this final. Yeah. There's no out. Like, I'll kill myself to be in this final. I don't care. They said, okay, good. We'll see. Had a training session. He said, Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to, to split it up 45, 45, you for 45, and then the other guy, but we don't know who's gonna start yet. And in my head, I was like, you told me I can play 45. I'm pushing for 90. So it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Get there. He asked me straight up, yo, Derek, can you start? I said, yeah. He's like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm putting, I'm putting my eggs in, in one basket with you. So you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta close it out. I was like, all right. And then I just felt it, the warm up. I don't know. It, it was like, it was like mm -hmm. a, a, a you just knew it. You just knew it. Yeah, it was like everything, like the first, like I'll juggle and stuff and I'll like pop the ball up. This one I popped up mad high. I'm like, okay, I can't. Brought it down nice and smooth. I was like, oh yeah, see, yeah, this is it. Possession didn't lose it. Then we're doing finishing and every single, every single chance I got goal, goal. So I got into the locker room and I just felt like, yeah, this is, this is it. We get the first goal. Then the second one ball popped out play it over to me first time finished bottom corner and it was like yeah all the all the stuff that I went through getting COVID Cincinnati cut by rebel yeah everybody now gotta see I got the target on my back now so all y'all can kick rocks that's that's <laughs> how I felt I felt yeah definitely felt like redemption and then yeah to have my family my parents in the stands and all that stuff and then for us to win yeah it was it was surreal because just a, a year later, a year earlier, I didn't have a club. So it was just like the the realization of how how quickly things can turn. 
it's, it's, and it's, it's crazy because again, you know, I'm going through you winning, um, you winning what you um, what you won, you know, in terms of the MLS Cup, and then you scoring, and then how do we get from you having that high to suddenly going to Atlanta? Yeah, it was that's a tough one. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, so twenty. Yeah, we won in twenty. 2020 and then 2022 I had a really good season like yeah I think nine and nine and six nine and seven so pretty good numbers and Atlanta came calling and to be honest I had mixed feelings on it because I've heard how difficult it is to be a, an attacking player in Atlanta things aren't going right why is that so it's it's a it's a it's what is it? it's like Chelsea. Mm, mm. It ain't working. All right, you guys, you guys, yeah, go go somewhere. We'll we'll buy someone else real quick. That's like that. No no time to get you know things going. You don't really get that the opportunity to dig out of things. It's like oh stuff's hitting the fan. All right, I'll I'll drop a I'll drop a billion and sign fifteen more guys. It's all good. Like it doesn't matter. So. That and then, yeah, the the in the league just having some of the you know the black players playing, they said yeah it's real difficult because you know, you know how it is you you play with people that you're like with people you're from you know you have clicks and all that stuff and then like yeah so sometimes you know you're on the outside looking in yeah they they'll they might if, if they're gonna split it up in tens, ten pass uh ten 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 ten. Yeah, you go, you gonna get your ten last. It's like they they gonna look for their boy first, then this guy, and then that. So I I heard a lot of that, but I'm thinking, yo, we we all speak football. It don't matter. Like, they that that's what it's gonna be. And then on top of that, I had tore my the last game of 2022, actually scoring. I tore my my uh, uh muscle in my quad, so I was out for uh eight to twelve weeks. So I didn't have I didn't have an off season. I didn't have a preseason. So like the team signed with the team and all that stuff. I think uh probably there's probably like three weeks before the first game I just had like my first real like on the ball training session and all that stuff. So I'm, for me, I'm like, yo, I gotta, I gotta I gotta get fit. I that's all that really matters. I gotta get fit, be ready to to play so I can, you know, they spend they spend good money on me. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a, a big signing this year. So yeah, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be a flop. And it just it just seemed like from that point on, nothing worked in my favor. Like the the injury like had a had a setback. So now I'm even pushing even more to try to get back. Then when I was out, the guys in the position that I was in in the winger position started scoring. So like it kept me out even longer. And then by the time I started playing, the team wasn't playing well. So we had, there was no real connection between the guys. Then we go, then I go to national camp, come back. So it was like, it was almost like I never felt stable there. And then the summer came, went to Gold Cup, came back, new signings that were in. And that's really how my my time went went there. It was just a lot of what if moments uh, were there. So it was, yeah, it was definitely difficult because that was the first, that was probably the first time in my career where it was really like, yeah, you're just not. You're not in the involved. You're not in the team. You're you're on the outside looking in without any like real reason reason or why. Like some of the things that were said to me, I said okay, and we'll go and implement what he said, and then come back and oh, but it's this as well. And it's just like yo, you should have told me that from the beginning. And then like it's it's cool. Like so yeah, for it it just it just felt as if. I was, I had my time and it didn't work. I didn't fit in the, in the group. I didn't, I, did, I wasn't able to do what I felt I could have. And I don't, I don't blame that on, on the team. I, I take responsibility as well. Cause I felt like I, if I went in with a different mindset, I think things could have been different, but yeah, I, it's a, something that I'm definitely, I feel like I learned from coming now to, to where I am now, just, you know, that sometimes it, it just don't work out. Some teams 
just you don't fit in you don't their style might be different your the way you can be used that best suits you might not be the best for what the the team style is so yeah i just i had to take that on the chin because that was uh, that was uh, a tough year of feeling like all right i'm in atlanta mm. the the biggest stadium in the in the country 40,000 fans every time every every weekend like thinking all right this is your chance to show all right this is this is the stage you belong on top winger in a top team in the in the league and yeah it just didn't work out but uh there's always a a plan b god always got something so that's it that's it and um it's it's just interesting how you know from the outside again looking in it just you know Atlanta fans might look at this and or look at you and just feel like, oh, he's not good enough. Oh, his time, it, it's, it's not worked out for him. But there's so many different circumstances and things that happen behind the scenes that people just don't see. And, you know, I think what people forget about players is that, you know, that there's this thing that players need to just, you know, just deliver. It don't matter what's going on in, the, in, their, um, in their personal lives behind God's will, just, just deliver. When mm-hmm. really, really and truly, it's not that easy. You know, you need the rhythm, you need the confidence, you need to feel good. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? And and if if those things aren't going right, and it's it's so start stop, and it's hard to actually do what you you can do because you don't just forget how to play football overnight. Yeah, you don't. You 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 don't you don't do that. But you know you know you you're talking about how there's always a, a plan B, and you know you find yourself at Toronto, and I, and I alluded um, to this at the beginning of the podcast that. This is almost, is this almost like your redemption? Like, nah, my comeback to show that people, to show people that, nah, I am still that player. I can still just um, deliver and I'm going to prove the doubt is wrong. Is there an air of that right now with Toronto? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, this is, this is, it, it's a very fitting uh, re- revenge tour. Like it's, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Like, uh, I marked on the calendar when we play Atlanta. I got that in there. So it's like, like I I felt I wasn't able to 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 show the role player that I was, that, that I was capable of being with Atlanta and kind of felt almost as if, you know, like given up on. And once once I started to feel that, it got to a, a point where it was more so now about pride. So every training session in Atlanta, I was I was I was a maniac. I was making sure that I, all the guys in my position, all right, I had my own little competitions with them. All right, who's scoring more goals today? Okay, who who's setting up more plays on all this stuff? Just so that if I get an opportunity to talk to the coach, this is what I've done, this is what it is, all that stuff. And I, it just felt to the point where it was like, he understood, yeah, I get it, but he had almost like he had his mind made up on his guys, which is fine with me. I'm glad that we were able to work on now and I was able to go to Toronto because I feel I can feel there's a difference here. Like when I first spoke to the coach, I can feel how, how uh, that I can feel his energy through the phone of how excited he was for me to be here, how he saw me being here, you know, how he felt he can get the best out of me and how I felt that coaches got the best out of me. And from the jump, it just felt like a, a connection that was, that was going to work. And, you know, I've played in games and it's so far, it's been going real, real well. So yeah, I've, I've just thought about the fact that, yeah, all, all those games I had to watch last year, I make, I'm getting, I'm getting everything back in blood this year. And that's, that's exactly <laughs> how I feel. It's, it's on smoke with everybody. And I just know once, once it kicks off, yeah, they're going to have to hear my mouth. Cause I am, I talk, I that's talk, it. they're going to they gonna, they gonna have to see me for sure. Uh, I, I I absolutely love that man, and you know it's just it's just so good to you know when you talk to people, you come across players, and you know they've got that fire lit in them. Because I'm pretty sure if I spoke to you this time last year or whenever you was at Atlanta, the fire probably wasn't would have been. You probably wouldn't have even done the podcast. You probably, yeah, probably wouldn't have even done the podcast. Yeah, like I can't be out here doing podcasts. I'm not even playing, bro. I can't. Nah, well done. Yeah, definitely. No, no, I, I I hear it. I hear it. So. You know, to to get you here in this position, and you know the the, the fires, it's just it's just good to see. And you know, more um, 
more success for you, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, you're gonna you're gonna do great. Like I said, you don't forget to play football and that. You get what I'm saying? And and from when you're still able to get these top teams because Toronto's not a small team. Exactly. It's not a small team, but from it, when you're yeah, no, from, from, from when you're able to to still manage to get that team and you know they see something in you, there's obviously something there. So you know, I have no doubt that you're you're going to do great. But what I do want to do right now is a couple random questions. Not not yeah. random, but you know. So um, I, I mentioned that I'm on this journey of getting to know the MLS a bit more. You know, because I'm I'm never going to know the MLS like I know the Premier League yeah. or like I know Italy or Spain or whatever. I'm never going to know, yeah. but I'm 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 doing my best. So every week, what I what I started doing. Um, I started watching just one random game in MLS because obviously mm-hmm. the, the time difference makes it makes it hard. And um, yeah, what what I will, what I want to ask you is if there's one player that you know without bigging them up too much, if there's and not Messi or Suarez, if there's one player that you think that I should look out for in the league, who would you say? Darling Nagby. Who? Darlington Nagby plays for Columbus. Oh, he plays for Columbus. Okay. I'm okay. telling you right now. I think that if there's anybody in this league that could play in Europe, it's 100% that guy. Like this guy, he's an anti press magnet. Don't lose, the, doesn't lose the ball. Like, always calm it's it's he he literally toys with people out there he it's it's low-key busquets like he'll 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 lull you to sleep come come close come close spin out get out like the technical ability brain iq off the charts i'll say him let me think there's there's some there's some guys i mean you know what i've look, i've just looked at who it is and i already know him Oh yeah, I no, I don't know him personally, but like, I already seen him play. You know, Cause yeah, yeah. When when I watched um one of Columbus's games earlier in this season, mm-hmm. um, I saw him, and I was just like, who is this guy? Like, yeah. thing is, this. my my kind of player is him. You know, the ones that always look like they just got the most amount of time on the ball. Yes. And yeah, that's 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 him, and he plays he plays like someone that's been here for a while. Mm-hmm. So now I'm just looking at him. I just seen he's 33, but you know. playing with this guy, yo, like I, I think I'm a a technical player. So like I fancy myself dribbling. I feel like I not a lot of times. I just like feel like I don't know what I'm doing. But mm-hmm. all I know is if I if I got the ball and I saw him, I already knew that if there's a chance of me losing this ball, just give it to him. We gonna keep it. Like that's how confident I was. He can have three guys around him. Yeah, he gonna he gonna find a way to keep the ball, get it to the other side, or or or, or double out of it. So yeah, him. I'm trying to think, cause I don't want to say nobody that like I'm playing against soon. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they gonna try to use that. Like, no, oh, yeah. let's, no, no, let's 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 keep it. Let's keep it as 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 him. Okay, cool. That's one. If you had to pick, um, a stadium for me that you that you say you have to visit, which stadium would it be? Who? Mercedes Benz in Atlanta. Oh yeah, see, okay. Let, let, let me quickly talk about Atlanta, right? So I didn't know that Atlanta were the team that they are in terms of like commercial. I yeah. I, I I did not know that in, in the slightest. So I'm here trying to find players and and do another event, and I was thinking, let me do an event in in Atlanta. And when I'm in America, I like to do the event at like my live shows. I like to do them at the stadium. Because it just yeah. helps with bring with bringing people in. If you heard the price that they quoted me, oh, <laughs> I said, I said, nah, nah, nah. What kind of team is this? And then people have been telling me about their revenue and and they're a, a, an actual machine. A machine. Yeah. It's yeah. I'm telling you, something. the games, unreal. Like you get there and you go out, like you walk out and the horn, like they do like a horn because of like the they're they're called the five stripes, but it's like because of the a railroad uh, tra- railroad station and all that stuff. So you yeah, honk a huge horn, 
and then you just go out there and you get some red and black in your bones. Like it's proper a, a proper atmosphere. Another place, everything. Um that's always always a good crowd. LAFC. Oh uh, yeah, I can imagine that one better. They 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 always they're like one thing I'll say about MLS is if you're having a good season, fans are coming out and supporting you. It's it's not like of course you have those live and die, but you also Ooh. have a lot of support that's coming out. Oh, you know what, this will be a nice time, family time to come out with my family and all that stuff. So like I wanna I, I like the places that are rowdy that like you can feel like a tension like they talking back, they talking back to the the players on the side. So I'll give you, I say Atlanta. I think that's some the the most fun to go to because there's just so much. Yeah. Shall I? Shall I? Um, I I reckon from what I've seen, and I might be wrong here. I feel like Charlotte might be one of those clubs. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think it depends on if they're having a good game or not, though. If they're that like they're mm. that they're they play at the the football stadium and that's one thing I, do, I don't like necessarily all the time about playing in football stadiums is because they're so massive that like you can have 20,000 there but it feel like 5, 10 because you just see all the extra stuff up there but yeah they you know one that's a good one too Orlando mm-hmm. Orlando they're, they're I like I like Orlando because their fans talk like they it's 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 borderline like they're on the field. They hate y'all just as much. Like that's that that's the places I like. I like going into hostile territory because it's it's just that much more fun. That makes the game the high, the stakes higher, and all that stuff. Okay, cool. Um, growing up, what football team did you support? Arsenal. Great stuff. I'm an Arsenal fan myself. Who was your player that you looked up to? Ronaldinho. You looked up to Ronaldinho. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who was your favorite Arsenal player? Thierry. Oh, okay, that's, 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 that's. He, yeah. it's funny because he was—he's not my favorite Arsenal player. Really? Until I, suppose, until I say who it is, and then they're like, okay, I get it. Yeah. Who is it? He, okay, so Henri was the best, mm-hmm. but my favorite was Dennis Bergkamp. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See, so, so so people are like, oh, okay, cool. I, I yeah, I I I liked I liked Thierry. Like for me, my dad was an Arsenal fan. My uncle was a Manchester United fan, but like when I was growing up, a lot of people were Manchester United fans and it was just like, I'm not really trying to be a bandwagon. But then when I saw Arsenal, it was like, I saw a bunch of black players with personality and it kind of resonated with me because that's how my dad was and that's how I saw myself being. So like, it made it, it made it feel as if, I could be there one day and it just made my attraction with it with with football grow because yeah to see you know Thierry score then turn around look at the fans and yeah like it it gave me that that um I feel like it would draw me to sports a lot is I just like confrontation like the 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 talk between players the the the, the jawing back and forth so it kind of he kind of carried himself like it with the NBA type of mindset that like, yeah, like, oh, okay, you wanna you wanna talk, you wanna mm. do this, okay, all right, we can we can get into it. So like it was that really, but yeah, Ronaldinho was the guy who 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 made me fall in love with the game because this guy was just this guy was enjoying himself 24-7 playing with a smile. And that's that him and Rubinho, those two guys were huge for me growing up. That's a Rubinho. Go about it. Um Okay, no, that's all I've... That's, all right, one last one. Who's winning the Champions League? I think that's easy. I don't know. It's Real Madrid. There's, yeah, it's, it's, that's it's their, that's their trophy. That's... There is... I, I would love for Marco Royce to go out from Dortmund. Mm. Like, because, you know, I I do... I think he was too loyal. Yeah, yeah. And I think he could have... The way his career could have... Turned out, I mean, because at that time, what, 20, 2014, 2015, mm-hmm. those years, 13, those years, he was, he was going to, he was going to be the next, I thought he was going to mm-hmm. be the next. I thought, I thought what Royce was going to be is what De Bruyne is now. 
Yeah, yeah. Diff- oh, different, different quality. So different. like the I like the just the 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 technical ability he had the way he he struck the ball the 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 way he saw the game I was like he's going to be one of those guys who might not be able to compete and dethrone Messi Messi and Ronaldo but he'll be able to be in that conversation with them I thought for sure but yeah he just got he I think he's too loyal to to Dortmund to a fault so I would love for him to win one to to make it all worthwhile, but I just can't see them stopping Vinny yeah. Rodgers. Dude. Dude. <laughs> yeah. All the guys, like, yeah, it's just, it's it's like when Golden State was playing against the Cavs and they had nobody. It was, it's been, <laughs> yeah, it was, but hey, it could, it could change. It could it change. Could. It could. But yes, yeah, um, thank you so much. Um, for, for for doing this podcast, man, it's, it's been an enjoyable one, man. And I told you, it's not a media. It's just yeah, two guys. Nah, it's just two guys just chatting. I'm not good. I'm not good at that stuff anyway. So it's like, yeah, I, yeah. I can't. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, I, I was never. I was never a fan of the the whole robotic and whatnot. So you know, I, I like I like this format. But um, thank you so much. I wish you nothing but the best this season. Um, the way you're talking, right. I feel sorry for some of those people you're coming up against because for sure. once it once the once the first goal hits the back of the net, it's curtains for these men. So I'm not <laughs> even, nah. The way I the way I felt all last year and the beginning of this year before the trade, I was like, I I need I need just one opportunity to go out there and and bust net and then it's up because yeah, like is there there's not. All I want is the is is validation to prove myself right because I don't really care what none of these people on Twitter are talking about because at the end of the day y'all can y'all can come to the crib and play me one on one and y'all can't see me so I don't really care so all I gotta, <laughs> all I got to do is just yeah I I talk a a good game because I'm confident I can back it up and all I want to do is back it up so I can just sit there and say I told you so. Well, are they coming for you on, on social media? Oh, so oh, these these men were ruthless on Twitter. Sometimes, like there will be game, like there was a game that I wasn't even in, and someone said, "Yeah, like I just feel like, like I, I think we were playing, we were playing uh, uh, Miami, and these guys just hit me up talking about, yo, you dribbled it out of bounds like three times this game.' I said, "I didn't even play. What are you talking about? Like what? I got a PK. I, I played five minutes, got a PK. What? Why are y'all talking to me? I didn't even miss the PK. What y'all y'all chatting to me for? Yeah, nah. Some of these people out here did, just got." Crazy Twitter fingers. I had to had to stop looking. Like after a game, I just turned off Twitter because it was yeah, it was getting to a point. I'm like, yeah, these men's about to like really. I really will. I will dead ass drop my send you a DM, drop the location. You can come play me, and you, you beat me, you can have my spot on Atlanta. That's how I was feeling because these guys were talking crazy. crazy. Uh, no, that 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 is hilarious, man. But it's it's so funny because if you were to meet these guys that do it, when they meet you, they'll they will be like, oh my gosh, can I have a picture? Can I? Yeah, no. Yeah, it, but it's, it's, it is what it is, man. You just got to ignore, ignore the noise. And then, like you said, when, when it will work out for you, just just keep talking. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, guys at home watching this, thank you so much for joining. Um, it's been a while since I had the MLS players on, but they're back now. Um, Derek Etienne Jr., he is, he is you know, he, he has been a great, a great guest and, you know, long may it continue. Hopefully, the player he's just spoken about Nagme, hopefully he, he does, you know, a great assist there. Wink, 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 <laughs> wink. But, um, so, I yeah. So, so um, yeah, guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, get in the comments. Let me know which MLS players you want to see. Those of you who are watching this in America or listening to this in America, you get in touch with me. Let me know what who, who you feel like I should be getting on the podcast because you guys probably know more than me. In fact, you definitely know more than me. So, um, yeah, that's it for me. And um, I'm out in a bit.